Bye bye, car. <laughs> All right, guys. So today what I'm going to do here um, is I'm going to um, start this video off because I feel like this is a very important video. So what you guys just saw um, is basically a clip um, of my car being towed away. Um, I was very happy um, because my car was being towed to a mobile mechanic who was going to do an engine swap for me. And the mechanic actually did do an engine swap. Um, and I want to make you guys aware of what you need to know before you get an engine swap done for your car, okay? So I have um, 10 important things that you need to know before you get an engine swap because this is really gonna save you guys a lot of headache um, when it comes to an engine swap, okay? So give me just a moment here. I gotta go ahead and um, basically uh, get a little comfortable here and then I'm gonna tell you guys about these tips, okay? All right, guys, so let me turn my sound up here. Hold on one second. Make an adjustment here, turn my sound up. All right, guys, so 10 things I learned from a mobile mechanic replacing my engine in my car. These are things that you need to know before you get an engine swap, okay? Like I said, this is gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of headache, okay? All right, number one, an engine swap or an engine repair or a motor swap is not a two-day repair. It's a repair that takes a month or longer to complete. Here's why I say this. I had a mobile mechanic come to my house and he did a few repairs on my vehicle because my car was overheating really bad. And my car started overheating some years ago, I'll say like five years back. But um, I found out about uh, a way to slow the overheating of my head gasket in my engine. So my boyfriend, what my boyfriend did was he put some, um, I believe it was um, some gold head gasket seal into my car. And that actually seemed to help. And I'll have to double check if that was what the um, head gasket still was but it sounds like that was right and you definitely want to you know do your research before you put any kind of head gasket seal in your car okay for me that head gasket seal actually worked okay it actually worked just fine okay so when the mechanic came to fix on my car he bragged about how he did um, transmission swaps and engine swaps and he made it sound like it was very easy to do an engine swap and so i was like oh okay well luckily i won't need that because anything to do with swapping an engine in my mind i was like okay that's going to be expensive you know but this mobile mechanic he seemed like you know he seemed pretty nice and stuff he seemed like he had a lot of clients and stuff so i was like you know, and he was trustworthy because every time I needed something fixed, he actually um, would show up and he would make the repairs for me. I didn't seem to have any kind of problems or any type of issues or anything with him, you know, at that point. But I want to let you guys know, an engine swap is not a two-day repair. It is a repair that can take up to a month or longer. The mechanic that I have had working on my car, he made it sound like it was going to take two days. 
He made it sound like it was going to be super easy. Okay. And, um, you know, it didn't turn out to be that way. He has had my car now for about, you know, at least two weeks. And, you know, he was supposed to drop, had dropped off my car. And he still hasn't dropped off my car yet. Okay. So, um, an engine swap is not an easy thing. If you're going to do an engine swap yourself, I wouldn't recommend it unless you have really good mechanic skills because you're taking apart a whole car and putting it back together. All right. So, you know, if you think you can do it, great. Uh, for my research, uh, people have said it took them, you know, maybe six months or a year to do an engine swap if they do it by themselves, you know. So it's possible it can be done, but it's better to get it done by a mechanic that's a professional okay somebody who knows their way around an engine you know because there's all these little you know wires and bolts and screws and you know all kinds of stuff that you have to know about with a car and you know fluids and everything that you have to know about in order to do an engine swap and it is a grueling process and it's not an easy thing, no matter what you hear in YouTube videos, there's a lot more that goes into it. I actually watched this guy on YouTube and he was doing an engine swap and he knew his way around cars, okay? And this guy, like, there was so much stuff that he had to do with the engine swap. And he actually had to be like super duper accurate and he knew his way around cars. But imagine if you're trying to do that. You know what I mean? It's, It would really be frustrating for somebody who has no idea what they're doing with cars. You know? But if you're somebody you think you could do it, go for it. Okay? Point number two. If your engine needs to be swapped or replaced, buy a brand new engine. from your car's engine manufacturer that is warrantied, okay? Here's why I say this. For my car, luckily, I was able to get an engine from a salvage yard, but I actually had to find that particular engine. The mobile mechanic that swapped my engine he didn't find the engine for me. I had to find the engine, okay? The same thing went for the guy whose transmission that the mobile mechanic had to fix, too, in the past, right? That guy had to go and find his own transmission. And at first, that guy, who was a customer of the mobile mechanic, actually had bought the wrong transmission. So he had to take that transmission back and then he had to buy another transmission, which made it so he was without a car for a long, 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 long time. Okay. So if you are going to be getting an engine swap and you're having a mobile mechanic who's going to do the repair for you, you're going to have to find the engine that goes into your car. The tricky part is, is that some cars are going to have the complexity of you finding the engine because for my car in order for me to find an engine i thought it would be just as simple as calling around and you know talking to you know some salvage yards and they'll just recommend an engine what i found out when i talked to salvage yards is that they said in terms of getting an engine the engine that's going to be a match for your car, it's going to go by the sixth digit or the eighth digit of your car's VIN number. So if you don't know your car's VIN number, then you can't go and buy an engine because that VIN number that your car has is going to determine what engine is going to fit your car. Now the tricky part for my car is is that I thought it would be one engine that would fit my car. But what it turns out is, is that 
there are two engines that can fit my car. One that is a better match, which, um, which is determined by the sixth digit of my engine, okay? When it comes to a 1992 Honda Accord, you have to know what the sixth digit of the car is. For other cars, you have to know what the eighth digit is in your car's VIN number is in order to get a engine. But there are variations that can come in your car's make and model that can determine what engine you can get, okay? Now I'm gonna throw something in here, guys. When it comes to buying an engine, Okay, let's say you get an engine from a salvage yard. An engine from a salvage yard, um, for me, I got lucky. Um, I ended up paying um, $700 for the engine that fit my car. Okay, now, if you get an engine from a salvage yard, understand that engine may not be perfect. Even if it's low miles, there could still be some issues with that engine. That's what the mobile mechanic told me because when he was doing the engine swap, then he made me aware that there were some things on that engine um, that were not good. So he had to use parts from, um, he had to go and get parts from the salvage or um, to replace parts that were in that engine to make it work for my car. So the point I want to drive home here, guys, is that an engine from a salvage yard is not going to be brand new. It's going to be used. Okay? So it's very important for you guys to know this because, you know, if you have the situation where your head gasket blows in your car, which is a lot of people, and you have two options. You have the option of get a new engine or a new car. And if you try to buy a new engine for your car, a new engine for my car is three thousand dollars, which is more than the, and which is more than the value of what my car is worth. And I would have had to consider the cost of shipping, which would have been thousands of dollars more, which would have been outrageous. Which I didn't have that kind of money lying around. I did have enough money to get a used engine that the mobile mechanic was able to make work for my car, but again, there were some extra parts and things he had to buy for my car, okay? Getting a new engine from your car's engine manufacturer that's brand new makes it so that if the engine's brand new, there's not going to be anything wrong with any of the parts on that engine. There shouldn't be, and if there is, you can call that engine manufacturer and you can make sure they replace that or send you a brand new engine, especially if you bought it. But expect to pay thousands of dollars for that. And you can go online and um, find an engine. Um, you just have to know who manufactured your car's engine. And what you can do is always call a local uh, car dealership that does maintenance for your particular car and they should be able to tell you what kind of engine is gonna fit your car. Um, and they should be able to give you the details you need to order it. Um, they may, if you know, if you're comfortable going to a dealer, then they could replace the engine for you. But again, you have to know it's going to take a while for them to fix your car. You know, an engine's not a, you know, one and done type of situation where like they have your car for 24 hours and you get it back the next day. It's not like that. Another thing about a new engine is going to be warrantied, so the longer the warranty on your engine, the absolute uh, better the deal is for you because if something goes wrong with the engine, at least you can get another engine to replace the one that you bought. If you get an engine from a salvage yard, um, the engine that I brought, it had a 100-day warranty, which is about three months and um, a few days, right? Um, but still, there were still issues with the engine um, that I brought, okay, uh, that the mobile mechanic had to work with. All right, point number three. The price quote that you get for an engine swap can change and end up being more expensive than what you planned. So, when the mobile mechanic 
quoted me a price for an engine swap. He told me an engine swap will be $500. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a good deal. 500 bucks, I can do that. You know, and not everybody has money just lying around in savings. I mean, we all got things going on. For me, luckily, I had the money, you know, saved. And so I was like, okay, this is going to be great. Right? So um, he told me it's going to be $500. Um, after my car was towed away and my car got to his house, then um, I had to wait a few days for the mechanic to pick up the engine that I had brought from the salvage yard, okay, which I did not plan and I wasn't happy with. And um, I would say um, after that, the mechanic told me that instead of the engine swap being 500 bucks, $500, he told me it was going to be $625. So $125 more. Okay. I talked to the mechanic on Wednesday of this week. Okay. which you know he's had my car for at least two weeks he told me he's like okay well you know the car is going to end up being more money okay so instead of the car being $500 like he initially said or $625 like he told me after that the car is going to end up being $750 for the engine swap because the mechanic you know had to put more parts in it spend more time with labor some parts of it I feel like he just kind of dragged his feet on you know and so I'm just like why am I paying for extra time you know I don't have my car back now the mobile mechanic he's supposed to drop off my car in the morning at 8 o'clock in the morning so we'll see what the hell happens but um he hasn't been the most reliable and with giving me updates, okay? So expect, if you're going to get an engine swap, expect it to be more expensive than you plan, okay? Very much so, just expect that. And I would say expect this from a mobile mechanic. Um, you may even have to expect this if you go to a dealer you most likely they're going to be spending more money okay just so that you know point number four and i know for some of you you guys are like this is long but this is important this is important because you need to know all this before you get your engine swapped because for some of you you're going to be told oh an engine swap is going to be fast and simple in two days and it's not going to be it's going to be way longer than you're thinking. And if you are somebody that you have a job where you have to drive a long distance and you don't have public transportation in your area, luckily for me to get to work, I was able to use transportation. However, it was very frustrating. You know, it's very frustrating to have to walk and use public transportation and stuff like that. You know, it, it really is. And these days, you know, it's dangerous. So... You know and not being without a car for weeks at a time sucks and if you're somebody that you have someone in your household that has health conditions and stuff and they can't walk or maybe you have health conditions and you can't be walking long distances and stuff that could take you 20 or 30 minutes then you know you definitely don't be you don't want to be without your car for a long time so that might mean you might have to rent a car for weeks and it costs a lot of money to rent a car for weeks at a time and you may have to do what you have to do i understand but i want you guys to understand and know that not being with not having your car around is a big 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 deal you know it really is if you're lucky enough to get a dealer you know or a mechanic shop to um, get you a loaner car that is awesome if you have that ability to do it okay and just because I have an older car and you may have a newer car 
engines can still go out. I heard today that somebody um, that I know, their engine, um, their engine is basically in trouble because their engine is leaking coolant. And that's what was happening to my car long before the head gasket blew, but it doesn't mean that it's not around the corner for that person's head gasket to blow. Because once the head gasket blows, then that can be the car. And it is dangerous to operate a car with a blown head gasket. I did it because I had to, and I didn't think it had much of an impact, but things worked out for me where I was able to continue to drive my car, but I had time in between where I wasn't driving my car for months at a time. For you guys, it may not be that simple. You may have to drive people from back and forth and stuff, you know, if they have health conditions or whatever, or maybe you're doing home health or whatever, you know. There may be a lot of things that you have to do in order to drive, you know, and you just may have to do what you got to do, you know. So I want you guys to know this is a thing, you know. I just want you guys to understand these things before you get an engine swap because I don't want you to end up like me. I don't want you to end up having to walk 30 minutes to the nearest public transportation um, station, you know, on foot every morning before, you know, just to make it to a subway or a tram or a train and then you have to wait for the subway, tram, or train. And then, you know, you have to make sure you have money to pay for the public transportation. Then you get on the tram and then you take it down to your job. And for some people, they don't have public transportation that goes to their job. And trust me, walking for 20 or 30 minutes, that is demanding. And I am a woman going and walking a far distance. Okay, luckily public transportation was able to get me there for some people where you live. It's not going to be the same for you. You know, this stuff is important, guys. It's really, 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 really important. Um, so, and I know I said point number four, I believe I did. There can be more issues with your car than just the engine. So it's important to get a diagnostic from a dealer to get an idea. Here's why. I had the mo mobile mechanic to do some small repairs to troubleshoot to try to stop the overheating in my car. So I had the mobile mechanic to, um, to replace the uh, radiator fan in my car. I had him to replace the fan relay in my car. Um, I had him to fix um, the valve cover gasket in my car, you know, because the engine was leaking. And I was having him do all these things, you know, to troubleshoot the, the overheating problem. And none of these things fixed it. The only thing in the end, from my research, that was going to fix the problem, because my head gasket was blown was either getting a new engine or a new car. And I decided I wanted to get a new engine. Now, like I said, I got a used engine from a salvage yard, but even that had, you know, even that had some issues with that, you know. Now, the reason you're gonna go and get a diagnostic from a dealer is because, a dealer or a mechanic shop, is because the reason you're gonna do that it's because when they do a diagnostic for you, like when I go to Honda to get a diagnostic done for my car, what they do is they outline every problem that's going on with my car and things that need to be fixed. And they actually tell me how soon a repair is going to need to be done. I once had a guy at the dealership at Honda. He literally walked around my car. And he said, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. He said, this is going to break down. This is going to break down, you know, within a few days. This is going to break down in a few weeks. This guy was a master expert, a master mechanic. This guy knew his way around my car. He had seen my car. He had worked on cars like mine. So this mechanic at the dealer actually knew. And luckily the guy did walk around my car and he did know, you know, what needs to be fixed because I was able to get those repairs done. 
thanks to a master mechanic. But it takes years for somebody to get to be like that, you know. And you might not necessarily find a master mechanic, you know, in your local neighborhood. You might not find them. They could be at a dealer or they could be in a local uh, mechanic shop around you. They could be. It just depends. But, of course, you want to do your research, you know. Don't trust just anybody to work on your car, okay? You're getting a diagnostic on your vehicle before you decide to get an engine swap because you want to find out the specific problem that's wrong with your car so you can fix it. If an engine swap is recommended or they say you have a blown head gasket and they can replace it, it costs $1,000 to replace a head gasket. You're better off getting an engine for your car because getting an engine, right, when you have a blown head gasket, and you continue to drive your car like I did, that damages other parts of your car. So if you just get the head gas to get fixed, that's not a guarantee that that's gonna fix any other issues that you caused if you were driving your car and it's overheating. You may have to drive your car when it's overheating because you may have a job that you have to get to and you may have to drive back and forth for, or you may have a loved one who you have to drive around from you know, doctor's appointments to doctor's appointments because they have health issues and you're trying to help them. You know what I'm saying? So that may be a thing. Okay? So you want to get a diagnostic to make sure that you know that your head gasket is blown and you know that you're going to have to replace your engine. Scotty Kilmer says if you have a blown head gasket, you either have to get a new engine or a new car. I recommend checking out Scotty Kilmer's channel because Scotty Kilmer actually knows what he's talking about. And when he mentioned that, and then my boyfriend told me that too, then I had to make a decision, okay? All right, so you wanna get a diagnostic, but make sure you get it from a car dealer or a mechanic shop that can outline that you absolutely need that you absolutely have a blown head gasket and you absolutely need to replace your engine, okay? You want to get that on paper. Get it in writing, okay? You may not want to pay a diagnostic fee, but it's cheaper to get a diagnostic fee than to be, be guessing around and what's wrong with your car like what I did, okay? All right, point number five. If there is something major wrong with your car, don't wait to fix it. For example, if you have a blown head gasket or you have problems with your timing belt, your timing belt is not something that you're gonna know that needs to be replaced. You're not gonna know that. You're not gonna have any idea that it needs to be replaced. That's something that a dealer diagnostic is going to tell you. That's why you wanna go to a dealer because they can actually tell you that it's time to get your timing belt replaced. And along with the timing belt, they're gonna replace your water pump too for an additional charge. Luckily for me, the dealer actually got me a loaner car during that time so I can drive around, okay? Because it took, it took some days before that was done, okay? But you're not going to know when it comes to your timing belt. That's a repair that you need to get done, and you need to verify that that needs to be done because if your timing belt breaks, your car is gone. Your car is not going to work anymore if your timing belt breaks. That's a very significant repair, and that can easily cost you... A little over a thousand dollars to get that repair done I remember that's what it cost me was at least a thousand dollars and like I said a lot of us don't have money lying around even if you could put it on your credit card you're still gonna be paying on that and you don't want to ruin your credit right that's why it's like so important to have a savings so that if anything happens with your car you can you know you can have a repair done it needs to be done now with a blown head gasket if you have a blown head gasket and you notice your car is overheating, right? And you notice that the overheating is becoming more frequent because with blown head gaskets, it's not going to show up right away. You're gonna have trouble with your car's radiator. You're gonna have trouble with coolant being on the ground. You're gonna get that fixed and then you're gonna think you're good. Then you're gonna find out later on down the road that the head gasket blew, okay? And then you're going to notice that your car's temperature gauge is going to start going up when you're sitting at a stoplight. And it's going to start becoming more and more and more and more frequent. 
And when that temperature gauge goes up to hot, you're going to have to pull your car over. You're going to have to turn your car off. You may have to sit for 20 or 30 minutes to let your car cool down. Then you might be lucky enough that your car turns over and then you can drive home. Okay? If you have that problem like what I did where your car overheats when you're sitting at a stoplight for a couple of minutes or you go for a drive in your car and you go for a drive that's less than two minutes and your car is already overheating okay your head gasket is blown if your head gasket is blown your car has a serious serious problem and this is something where your car overheating it can catch on fire I've actually seen somebody's car catch on fire before and it was because they kept trying to start their car and their car caught on fire. A head gasket blowing can be a problem because there can be fluids that are mixing in your car's engine like your coolant and the oil in your car mixing that can cause a fire and that could even kill you. So you do not want to be you don't want to be fucking around with something like this. You don't want to be messing around with this. If you have something serious that needs to be repaired, get a diagnostic and get that repair done as soon as you possibly can so that you can keep your car rolling. For some of you, you know, I know you may have to chance it like I did, you know, but please do not let this be something that you continue to let happen, okay? Because it can be life-threatening. I know, I know things are getting expensive. I know food's expensive. I know finding a job is essential. Or and keeping a job is essential. And I know that you don't have money lying around. But you have to get these repairs like this done so you can keep your car going. Because if you try to go out and buy a new car, I've been told by so many people, do not buy a new car right now. Do not buy a new car. Because you're gonna end up paying on a new car you could easily end up spending over a thousand dollars a month just to pay for that car plus you may have to pay for what's called gap insurance and you might not have that kind of money and you probably have a household to support with kids and you have other family members staying with you and you may not have that luxury you know and everybody's depending on that transportation you know what I'm saying so you know this is a pretty big deal. This is why you want to make sure that anytime you have a major repair that has to be done and you find out about it, please get it taken care of as soon as possible so you can keep your vehicle going. Because cars are expensive. They look shiny and new at the dealership and they look amazing and you can customize them and all kinds of stuff. But do you really want to choose between having a brand new car and having a roof over your head? Because that's where you'll end up being at. Now, you could end up trying to buy a used car, but even still, that can be kind of shady. Because I heard about this guy who brought a brand new car from a car lot, only to find out months later that the car he bought was stolen. And he had the police knocking at his door telling him that the car that he bought was not his car. That car that he ended up buying was actually stolen from somebody. And so they had to take the car. And the guy still had to make payments on a car that was stolen to that dealership or to that car lot. Okay? So just because you buy a new car doesn't mean that there's going to be issues with it. It could be stolen. All right. So we tackle point number five. Point number six. Keep a second car just in case your main car breaks down. I have been told this over the years, but I really did not listen. I was like, you know, I'm fine with one car. I don't want to pay car insurance on two cars. I don't want to pay maintenance on two cars. I don't want to do that. Now I understand the importance of having two cars. Because if one of your cars breaks down, like if you have an overheating engine in one car, like what I've been experiencing, you know, prior to the engine swap, then... If your car breaks down and it's not operable, okay, it even got to the point where the guy who towed my car, my car was, you know, it was starting up with, like the day before my car was towed, but the day it was towed, as you guys saw, right, 
then um, my car wasn't starting anymore. So my engine had literally it had literally went out that day. Right after I bought a new used engine. Okay. So time is of the essence. Okay. You want to have a second car just in case your car breaks down. It may seem expensive. Like you don't want to pay extra costs of having another car. But trust me, you're going to be happy if one car breaks down. You got another one to keep you getting around. Because this way, you won't have to walk like I did. You won't have to take public transportation like I did. You will actually be able to get into the other car and you'll be able to keep driving around while a mechanic is fixing your car. Okay? So you'll actually be able to do that. All right? Point number seven. Get your car fixed at the dealer or a more affordable shop like a Dobbs or some other type of um, chain mechanic shop uh, in your area. And the reason you want to do this is because the work that they do on your car is warranty. If you get the work done by a mobile mechanic, the work that they do is not going to be warrantied. They're only going to do the repair and then they may not, you know, necessarily stand behind that work. And you know, even if you try to call them, they may not answer after they've done your engine swap. They may not even call you back anymore because they'll feel like, okay, I'm just done. Another thing about working with a mobile mechanic is, is that they won't just be working on your car. They'll be working on other people's cars too. Like what happened with me. I thought the mobile mechanic was just working on my car, but actually he was working on his car and he was working on somebody else's car. So um, that's what really made it last so like, the fixing of my car takes so much longer because he wasn't informing me or updating me about what was going on okay you want to go to a you know dealer or a more affordable shop because at least what you can do is at least you know they're more reputable and you know they're more reliable okay and you at least know that because you know the dealership you know they're gonna they're gonna have to have you know they're gonna have to be reputable people are gonna be coming to you know to them to do repairs same thing goes for like if you go and visit a Dobbs or some other type of chain mechanic shop or maybe even a local shop okay point number eight if you're working with a mobile mechanic get reviews and references before agreeing to a repair at least make sure the mechanic has four stars or more on Google reviews. Why? The mobile mechanic I found was through Facebook. And for all intents and purposes, he seemed like he was a hardworking guy. Um, when I called him the first time, he, was, he answered the phone. He seemed like he was going to be about business. Throughout this experience with him, I found that he's become less and less reliable to the point where I would call him. I would text him and get no response and it would take him days to respond back to me. You don't want to have that situation. Okay. So if you're working with a mobile mechanic, you want to make sure they have a Google profile. Okay. And they have reviews where people have actually talked about the work they've gotten done, how satisfied they were, how long something took. Okay. You definitely want to do that. Just like you do on Amazon for reading reviews, you want to do the same thing. You want to do the same thing when it comes to a mobile mechanic. You definitely want to do that. Now, I actually did find a mobile mechanic on Facebook, or I'm sorry, on uh, Google, that had reviews that was said to be great. And this guy had four stars. And this guy, this other mechanic that I called, before I called the Facebook mechanic, um, this other mobile mechanic that actually had a Google profile that had like four or five stars, this guy turned out to not be reputable. Um, I called the guy one day and then he said he was going to show up on Saturday. Um, when I called the guy on Saturday, this guy wouldn't return my calls and I've never heard from that guy since. Okay, so even if somebody has four or five stars and I reviews, they still may be iffy because they still may not show up for you. Or you may have the mobile mechanic. They may blow you off for days. They may be scheduled to come to your house on one day, right? 
and then they're supposed to come at 9.30. Then you get a call from them. They say they'll come at 12.30, and then they'll just blow you off and say, oh, I'll, I'll be there in like three days, or I, I can't be there till next week. And here it is. You need your car, all right? So understand it's iffy with mobile mechanics. So that's why you also want to get references. You know, you definitely want to do that um, so that you can know, you know like you can um, actually call other customers and talk to them about what their experience has been, especially if they've gotten a similar uh, repair done to what you have. So definitely ask for that. Ask to speak to other customers that the mechanics, you know, has, you know, worked with so you can make sure it's reputable, okay? All right, we're getting down to the end here. We've got two more points, okay? I know this has been long, but this is information you guys need to know, especially if you're gonna be getting it in just well, because I do not want you guys to end up like me. I still don't have my car yet. I'm supposed to get it tomorrow, but the mobile mechanic has been unreliable to the point that um, I'm still having to guess and figure out if I'm gonna get my car. Okay, I don't want you guys to end up like that. Work with a mechanic who has, um, work with a mechanic who is honest, reliable, and organized. Listen for any possible complaints that they talk about that other customers have voiced to them about their service. So, you want to work with a mobile mechanic who is honest. Okay, so you want to work with a mechanic who tells you the truth one thing you want this mechanic to do is you want them to do a diagnostic on your car before they start doing any kind of repair work you want them to do a diagnostic so you want them to go the extra mile and do a diagnostic for you where they check out everything they check on your battery they check on your starter they check on your alternator they check your tires okay they check you know your fluids they check they check through a laundry list of things in your car before they make a determination of what is wrong with your car. They don't just go with what you say is wrong with it. They actually check your car out. This is how you're going to know that they're going to be honest because they're going to go the extra mile and they're going to diagnose your car first before they start fixing on anything, before you start buying any extra parts and you know guessing at it. Because guessing at what is wrong with your car is expensive, especially if you don't have any knowledge as a mechanic. You know what I mean? So you want them to be honest and you want them to be thorough, okay, with your car before they start working on it. And it's great if they offer to do a free diagnostic, but they may charge you like $25. Um, if you go to a dealer to get a diagnostic, it could be $75. It could be close to $100. It could be more than that, you know? And so, you know, understand a diagnostic is going to cost money. But if a mechanic offers to do a diagnostic for you for, you know, for $50 or less or something like that, and they are being honest and they want to, you know, they stand behind their work and they want to make sure that your car is fixed correctly, then that's what you want. You also want the mechanic to be reliable. So you want this mechanic to be the type where this mechanic actually updates you on your car so as the mechanic is doing important things to your car like if he's having to pick up your engine from a salvage yard if he's having to buy parts um you know you want the mechanic to give you an update you know every day on what he's doing you know and you want him to tell you everything that you know what the plan is for the engine swap what he typically has to do you want him to give you an outline of what he has to do to give you an idea of how long you're gonna be without your car. You want him to tell you how, how long will be typically from his experience. And you want him to give you that on paper, okay? And therefore, you have some kind of idea. Even if it's gonna take a month of you not having your car, at least this mechanic is going to write it up and tell you what is going to happen. And there's the chance he's probably gonna call you and say, you know, or text you and say, hey, there's more that needs to be done with your car. Well, at least he gives you a general idea of what needs to be done with a typical engine swap, and if he has to do anything more, at least he's being honest and upfront. 
the mobile mechanic I've been working with, he hasn't been as forthcoming with what kind of updates he's been making. I will call this mechanic and I can tell you, I can text him, I can call him and he wouldn't get back to me. And I literally have to give, leave text messages and call him and leave voicemails and all that throughout my work day for days at a time. And then when the mechanic feels like it, then he gets back to me, okay? You don't want that to happen to you. You want a mechanic who's gonna be reliable that's going to give you updates on what he's doing. And you want him to tell you that if he's gonna be working on a certain part of your car, that he may not, you may not hear from him for a few days, but he's still working on it. You want a mechanic who's going to send you pictures of what he's doing to your car. If he can send you video, great, but it tends to be hard to send video over of what's being done to your car. You also want the mechanic to let you know that you can come and see your vehicle at any time. You know, maybe not in the middle of the night, but at least you can come by during the day and you can see your car. You want the mechanic to tell you if your car is being towed from your house over to his house, okay, or his shop, you want to make sure that the mechanic absolutely lets you know that your car got there because your car could be towed to Timbuktu or it could be towed anywhere, be dropped off somewhere, and it may not get to the shop or the mechanic's house. And you have to verify where your car got to. Don't be like me where I thought that my car got to the mechanic's house and it did get to the mechanic's house, but then the tow truck driver actually knocked on the door of my mechanic's house and my mechanic wasn't even there. Okay? You don't want that. You want somebody who's reliable that's going to give you updates. Okay? And do all the things I just mentioned. Because that gives you peace of mind because there's nothing more, that is nothing that's going to drive up your stress and your anxiety worse than you not knowing where your car is. And then you not knowing what's happening with your car. And then you're getting frustrated and mad because you're worried that your car has been taken and you don't even know if you're going to get it back. You don't want to have that situation. You don't want to have to wait days to find out what's going on with your car. Okay? You don't want to end up like that. Okay? Because that's what happened to me. All right. You also want to work with a mechanic who's organized. Like I said, you want a mechanic who's going to give you an understanding of everything that's going to happen with your car, what's going to happen on paper, okay? You want him to do a diagnostic first to determine that an engine swap is needed, right? If you can get a dealer to verify that an engine swap is needed, good. You also want the mechanic to do a diagnostic, right, which could cost maybe $50 or less. Who knows? Depends on that mechanic's charge. You want the mechanic to be organized where he tells you what to expect when. And you also want the mechanic to be organized in that, you know, he's actually having somebody get back to you. And he's also, you know, giving you actual documentation as he's doing stuff, right? And you want him to call you back. You also want him as he's working on your car to make sure he has everything he's going to need to fix your car. That's where the diagnostic comes in, because if he does the diagnostic, the mechanic is not going to have to keep your car for more days because he didn't know that there was this issue or that issue with your car. You also want the mechanic, if you buy a, a engine from a salvage yard that's used, you want him to look that engine over before you buy that engine to determine that that engine is going to be a good fit for your car before you drop down hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? For some of you, it'll be hundreds of dollars. Maybe you might have to pay $1,000, but you want that mechanic to be there with you on the day that you're going to get that engine from the salvage yard. And hopefully you can find a mobile mechanic that can actually find an engine for you. He can go check it out for you. You know, make sure it's good and reputable first before you even come and buy the engine. That's what you want. You want a mechanic that's going to go the extra mile, that's going to be organized for you. And as he's fixing your car, he's letting you know what's going on, you know. And you can know that you're in good hands. There's nothing worse than a mechanic who's not telling you shit, okay. It's just letting you be mad and frustrated and angry and not know what's going on with your car and not give you updates. That's what happened to me. I don't want that to happen to you, all right. Now, guys, the last thing, okay. 
point number 10. All right, we're finally at the end. Do not work with a mobile mechanic who wants to tow your car to their house. Have work done only at your house or at a dealer or at a well-known mechanic shop you can visit to check on the progress of your car. I had my car towed, as you guys saw the vehicle, um, at the beginning of the video, to the mechanic's shop, or I'm sorry, to the mechanic's house. That was a big mistake. When the mechanic was doing repairs at my house, he was more reliable, he answered the phone more often, and he seemed like an overall great guy, right? When my car was towed to his house for him to work on, right? He became less reliable. He was less likely to update me, right? Less likely to answer phone calls, text messages, okay? Don't do that. If somebody's going to work on your car, have them work on it at your house. Now, if you're having your car be towed to a dealer, you want to make sure if it's being towed to a dealer, you want to have somebody drive behind that tow truck and make sure that tow truck is taking your car to the dealer or to the mechanic's shop that you're having your car towed to. So you make sure your car gets there. Don't just trust that the mechanic is going to tell you when your car gets there. You want to make sure that you have somebody to follow your car that's on that tow truck to the actual shop to make sure your car got there. It's even better if you're in the car with that person. And then you're dropped off back home. Okay? Just to make sure it got there. Don't leave it up to the mechanic. Don't be like me and just have your car towed and then think it got to, you know, the mechanic's house and then you're left wondering, is my car there? And the mechanic doesn't get back to you. Yeah, that's really nerve-wracking and fucked up, okay? All right. You want, you also want to make sure that it's going to a mechanic shop or the dealer, right? Like I said, you want to do that. And you want to make sure that you can visit your car as often as you need to. Now, you're not going to go and check on your car in the middle of the night because most mechanic shops and dealer um, places are not going to be open at that time, okay? But you want to make sure that you can go and visit your car to make sure work is being done. And you especially want to get an update from that shop about what's being done to your car. Because as you get updates, it's going to give you an idea of how soon you're going to get your car. Remember, like I said at the beginning of the video, a engine swap is not going to be two days and it's not going to be a week. It can take a month or longer for you to get your car back. And we all know we all have lives that we live and we need to have transportation to get around. And not having a car sucks. I can tell you from my personal experience. I'm still waiting for the mechanic to drop off my car. He was supposed to drop it off this morning, but he told me he got busy and he had to work on somebody else's engine. So guess what? I have to wait till tomorrow morning to hopefully get my car back. All right, guys. So I talked about 10 important reasons why you want to watch this video before you get your engine swapped because this is going to save you so much time. This is going to save you so much headache. This is going to save you so, you know, so much, you know, it's going to save you so much, you know, just overall frustration when it comes to an engine swap. Okay? So I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I know it's been long, but it's necessary because you guys need to know this stuff because I don't want you guys to end up like me. Okay? Very important point, make sure you have a secondary car, okay? I can't say that enough. I'm going to be working on getting me a secondary car. So just in case my car has any, my main car has any problems, I can jump into my secondary car, all right? And while my main car is getting fixed, I'll be driving around in my secondary car. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and have a great rest of your day. And I hope you guys do not have to go through any of the headache that I did. And I hope my tips are great to help you. Um, so I hope they've been helpful. And I hope that, you know, you guys do not have the same headache as me. And let me know about your experience with the engine swap. You know, have you ever experienced it before? 
Um, have you made any mistakes when it came to getting an engine swap done? You know, have you had a mobile mechanic work on your car? Let me know your experience. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.